Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a video uh, showing you how to install your OC Custom Trigger. Um, now I have a couple different models here, obviously everything from the 43 uh, through the 4th Gen 26 and 19, and then a 3rd Gen uh, Glock 21. Um, so here you, I have a couple different styles that you might run into, so hopefully I'll cover the gamut of... Uh, whatever kind of install you're going to be looking into. Now just as far as my history with OC Custom Triggers, I got my first one uh, for my Glock 21 here uh, probably almost two years ago uh, and I was a huge fan, absolutely loved it, absolutely adored it. Um, I, it was my first experience into the aftermarket trigger game. I was never really sold on aftermarket triggers beforehand um, but I went ahead and tested it out with this trigger that you see in here. Um, since then uh, I, I purchased one for my Glock 19 and then full disclosure the ones for my 26 and my 43 I did not purchase myself. Uh, OC Custom Triggers actually sent those to me for your charge. Uh, so I want to say thank you to them for that. Um, but just, just, you know, full disclosure, I didn't pay for these two, but I did pay for these two. Um, now, as far as my reliability goes, I have had 100% reliability with the triggers in all four of these guns here. Um, probably just with my Glock 19 alone, uh, especially with some of the courses I've taken recently, it's over 2,000 rounds on that trigger alone. And then between all of them, probably somewhere between uh, 2,800 to 3,000 rounds between the triggers on all, all four of them. And again, I have had zero issues with those triggers. Uh, so hence why I feel comfortable putting them in all my guns, considering that especially these three are my carry guns. So um, I, I trust my life to these. Like I said, they're my carry guns. Uh, I have no reservations trusting my life to these triggers. Now, in uh, my review videos for each of these, though, people were saying, hey, how do you install those? I'd like to do that myself. You know, how does that work? So I figured I would go ahead and do this video here. Because this could be a potentially long video, I'm going to do my best to signpost it. So if you're looking for a specific um, uh, aspect of it, hopefully, you know, I'll either put annotations on the sides um, so you can just click and go straight to what you're looking for uh, so you don't have to kind of flip through the whole video. Um, but I, again, that said, I do want to make it kind of comprehensive, so um, it, it, if you do watch the whole thing, it is going to be pretty long, hence why I have those signposts there. Uh, now, a couple disclaimers I want to get out of the way as well before I get into this. Um, first of all, I know OC Custom Triggers uh, recommends this, and I recommend this as well. Um, have a qualified, trained gunsmith do the install on your trigger for you, especially if it's something you're going to be carrying. Um, but that said, if you feel comfortable doing it yourself, um, then Glock makes it exceptionally easy to do, and so I'm going to walk you through that now. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my Glock 43, uh, and then show you all the aspects of that, and then we'll move on to the other uh, models. So without any further ado, I'll clear this out, I'll get all of these returned back to their factory triggers, and I'll show you from beginning to end how the process goes. Alright, so here we have my Glock 43. Um, now I want to demonstrate to you what the trigger is like on these before you swap out. So what the factory trigger is going to feel like. Uh, now, Matt, uh, excuse me, Glock advertises that their triggers are about five and a half pounds out of the box. I personally have never experienced that. All of mine seem to be considerably heavier, so I'm going to demonstrate th that for you right now. Uh, it can be a little difficult getting that trigger safety actuated with the um, scale. And so let's see where this is going to pull at. Okay, so right about seven and a half pounds. That's pretty consistent, but just for uh, sake of repetition, let's go ahead and try that again, just so you can see that was not a fluke. And again, depressing that trigger safety. Let's see where it's gonna break. That was even heavier, uh, closer to eight pounds. Now, this time I'm gonna show you that it's actually staying on that trigger safety the entire pull. Just so you can say, well, that's you know that's what's causing the heavy trigger pull. So get it to break, and again upwards of eight pounds. Again, that is consistent with every Glock trigger I've ever experienced. Out of the uh, out of the box, it is always heavier than advertised. And again, anyone who's felt the triggers can tell it, it's it feels a lot heavier than five and a half pounds. So let's bring that trigger pull down significantly. So first what we're gonna have to do is obviously disassemble our Glock. Wanna make sure it's clear. And then we're gonna pull down on the little takedown levers on both sides, pull back on our slide just slightly until we feel it um, kind of start to give. And then 
after while pulling down on the takedown levers, pull, push the slide forward and it's going to come off. We're going to set this off to the side and focus on uh, the frame here. Now, at least as of now, there aren't any future generations of Glock 43, so we really only have to deal with these two pins right here. It doesn't really matter what order you take them out in. Um, however, I have noticed I see a lot of people when they take out these pins, uh, whether it be on the 43 or really any of the Glocks, they tend to sit there with a punch and hammer this thing out. That's really not necessary. Um, what you'll notice is the slide lock right here where it goes in. Uh, it has a little bit of spring tension on it, so what I'll do is I'll get right to where it goes into the locking block, which is this silver block right here, and I'll kind of push down on it, and all I have to, it, I mean it already went, so I'll do that again. I just push down on it a little bit, kind of jiggle it around, and then it will, just putting a little bit of pressure on there, it'll let me push that pin all the way through. So again, you don't need to sit there and hammer away on it, totally unnecessary, and um, you know, anyway. Uh, then we have this pin back here, which is gonna house our trigger assembly, pushes straight through easily enough. At this point I'm just going to use some leverage and push up on the locking block to get that out of the way and then pull the slide lock up and out. At this point all we have to do, and seriously that's all you have to do, is pull up on the back of the trigger housing here and our entire trigger assembly is going to come out just like that. So now we have our factory trigger removed. Now, uh, the one that I got from OC Custom Triggers was already assembled with its own trigger housing um, and uh, the, the springs and um, the uh, connector as well. So I didn't have to do any assembly on this. If you do have to do any assembly, what I'm gonna do instead of doing that here because it can get really fiddly, especially with that spring in there, I'm gonna refer you to a full assembly video that I did showing you how all these pieces go back together um, because again, if I do that now, it's just going to take even longer and I can't guarantee that it'll go well. So I'll reference you to that video. I believe it's the first thing I do in that video. Um, and you can see exactly how that goes back together. Once it is assembled, seriously, all you have to do is drop it straight in, making sure that uh, the trigger housing kind of rides that ramp down in the middle and making sure that the trigger itself goes into the opening for it right back there. And sometimes the uh, back of the trigger bar here can get caught up. So sometimes you have to kind of push in on that and then push it down in and it is more or less installed. All we have to do is put our pins right back in. It should be easy enough. I'm gonna go ahead and put my uh, slide lock back in place. You should be able to see daylight through if you put it in the right spot. Put the locking block back in. And then I'm gonna put this pin in from right to left just so I don't have to worry about the detents hitting. And again, just kind of wiggling on that slide lock right here. It should push through just fine like that. So at this point, what I'm gonna do, make sure that my uh, guide rod is aligned properly, throw it back on, give it a full cycle, and let's see what our trigger pull is at right now. Uh, now it does have, I believe, a ghost uh, connector in there. Make sure I reset this. And pulling that down. All right, so now we are at actual five and a half pounds. So what Glock says the trigger's at, now it actually is after replacing those components right there. Now, if with the slide, if you have to replace any parts on the slide, the slide comes apart very easily. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push in on the guide rod just to release it from where it locks into the uh, barrel. I'm going to push up on the chamber part of the barrel and pull that straight out. Now, in order to actually dis, uh, disassemble this section in here, um, it's going to be hard to tell, but there's a little black sleeve visible just down here at the bottom of that little U. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Glock tool here and I'm just going to push down right on that uh, bar or that sleeve, all while pushing on this back plate right here. And uh, once you feel that push down, you can push back push down on the back plate here and I like to keep my thumb over it just in case anything under spring tension wants to pop out and then you can pull out your striker assembly and then your this spring right here for your extractor Let gravity help us there now in order to get uh, this little safety uh, plunger out what we have to do is push up on it and then our extractor will come out, theoretically. So again, let gravity be our friend there. 
and then we can just hopefully our safety plunger will fall out. Uh, so if you have ordered extra springs in order to get that spring out, all you got to do is literally just pull it straight out and uh, put your new one right back in. I like to kind of push it in there a little bit, hopefully get it stuck in there so it's not flopping around. Then if you have to replace the, uh, the striker spring, uh, which is up to you if you want to go that far with it, uh, what I like to do is I'll set my slide on end just like this and kind of let it do some work for me as a holder for it. And I'll set the striker part off just enough so that it's sitting on the top just like that. And what I'm going to do, and this is part can be really tricky, I'm going to pull down on the striker spring and there's two little cups up here that keep it in place. So I'm going to pull down with one hand and maintaining that pressure down with my other hand, I'm going to pull those two cups off. So hopefully we'll get this done first try. One and two just like that and slowly release up and now our striker spring is off. So at this point if we have any uh, stronger or weaker striker springs we can put that on, um, just slide it right back over the top and basically reverse the process. So what I'm going to do again, I'm going to push down maintaining pressure with this hand. I'm going to slide these cups back into place. I like to try to do the far side first, far side being the side you know that on the hand that I'm pushing down with and then slide this second one in easier. I do that this way in this order because it's a little bit easier to uh, do the little finesse maneuvering with the hand closest to it. So at that point, again, I like to release the pressure slowly just in case something didn't align properly. And at that point, our striker assembly is put back together. Um, so really the only springs you're gonna worry about replacing are the striker spring if you have one, and then maybe this plunger spring if you got a replacement one of those as well. So we'll put these back in reverse order. The nice thing about the uh, uh, Glocks is there's really no, it's impossible to put this plunger in the wrong way. On the Glock 43s, it's one direction only. You'll see in the hole, there's a flat part on one side and a round part on the other. So you just line up your plunger the same way. So flat side facing outboard, the curved side facing inboard. We're just gonna slide out. Yeah, see in there the the spring fell out. So I might have to do it so the camera can't see just so that spring actually aligns properly. So we'll get that up into place just like that. So when I push up you can see how that aligns. With that aligned we're gonna drop our extractor back in. Then at this point we can drop our spring back in. When you drop your extractor spring back in, you want the springy part towards the back. So this solid part is going to go in first. We can slide our extractor assembly, or excuse me, our striker assembly back in. Now at this point we can slide our um, end plate back on. What I like to do is I'll just take my Glock tool or whatever else I have with handy and I'll try to get so you can see this. I'll, I'll kind of get it lined up and then while maintaining a little bit of pressure with my left hand going up, I'll push down on the back of that sleeve here and then the, uh, the end plate will slide forward. Now we're just stuck on the extractor spring here, so I'll push in on that and again once you get to a certain point the end plate will start moving and then you just push it until it clicks and it should have a nice seat all the way around. There shouldn't be a big gap anywhere. So at this point we can reassemble our slide, drop our barrel back in, and then our uh, guide rod and spring, and then grab our frame over here, get everything back lined up. Now if you want to actually adjust the pre-travel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how the pre-travel eliminator and the over-travel eliminator works at the end since it can apply to all the different models. Uh, so I'll put an annotation taking you straight to that point right here if you want to uh, go there right now. Or if you want to watch the install on other models, uh, just keep watching uh, from here on. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to the Glock 19 here. Now um, obviously this one is my carry gun, um, or at least the one I carry most often. Um, on this one I took a little bit of a different approach. Uh, I went ahead and bought all the springs to replace as well, which I did not necessarily do with the Glock 43. So I'm going to show you, oh and I also did not get the over travel eliminator on this one. Um, so let me go ahead and show you uh, what's going to be different about this one. So same principle applies. Actually first what I'll do is show you um, what the trigger pull is before changing anything out and 
it's not going to be really before changing anything out because the striker spring has uh, been replaced. Uh, but since I already showed how to do that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just move on as though uh, it is original. So let's see, right at six and a half pounds. So again, even with the striker spring being replaced, we're still at six and a half pounds. Um, so again, over a pound heavier than the advertised trigger pull from Glock. Um, so let's go ahead and disassemble it. Let's take the slide off. Now this is gonna to apply to anything that's set up in the three pin configuration. So I believe that's gonna to apply to Gen 3 and 4 Glocks. Um, if you have, I believe Gen 2's only had a two pin set up um, and older. So um, this again is gonna only apply to Gen 3's and 4's uh, in any any of the other any of the guns, whether it be 45, 9 millimeter, 40, 357 SIG, 45 gap, anything like that that has a three pin setup, this will cover that. So uh, same some, uh, thing applies just like on the 43 that we just did, except we have one extra pin. So I'm gonna go ahead and just push this one out first and that shouldn't have any issue getting that one out. I'm also gonna go ahead and pop out the one for the trigger housing back here. Now this one, again, I see a lot of people take a hammer and a punch and just pound this thing out until it comes out. That's really not necessary. What I'll do is I'll grab the slide uh, lock back here and I'll just kind of jiggle it around and it helps to kind of set this up on the table try to get it so the light you can, with the light you can see it um, but I'll just put a little bit of pressure on and I'll just kind of jiggle around kind of pushing lifting and pulling uh, on the slide lock with my right hand and eventually we will get the yeah it just push once you feel it start it's gonna just fall right out so again easy enough didn't have to take a hammer to it um, absolutely not necessary so actually still need my tool, what I'll do is I'll just leverage the locking block out, just like that. We can take our slide lock out, which this one just FYI is the Vickers uh, extended one. Really like the way that thing fits my hand. Uh, so that is that. So at this point we can just lift our entire trigger assembly out, easy as that. And this is what it's gonna look like, uh, your factory trigger is gonna look like. Now again, the route I went when I ordered this one is I did not get the over travel eliminator, which replaces the entire back housing here. So I did have to do a little bit more assembly. Um, so I got a aftermarket extractor right here. I believe this is a Zev, uh, or not extractor, excuse me, a Zev connector. Uh, and then I also have the um, a different trigger spring here. So what I'm gonna do is in order to get the trigger bar off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of pull the end part outboard this way and kind of twist it up just like that. That's gonna unlock it from where it's seated and I can just lift it straight out like that. Now in order to get the spring off, what you can do is on both ends, there's gonna be a little bit of an opening where you can just slide it off from one end and then slide it off from uh, the housing right there. And at this point, in order to get the extractor off, or God, I don't know why I keep calling that extractor, the connector off, what you can do is either kind of get under there with a screwdriver and pry it up, or you have this nice little hole back here where you can just push in a Glock tool and that extractor will come out the other side. So I'll go ahead and throw in my uh, Zev connector to replace it. And all you gotta do is line it up and push it in the hole. And it's you can't put it in the wrong side, one side, it won't fit. The other side has a nice groove for it, so it'll be easy to tell. Then in order to get our um, trigger spring in, what I'm going to do is with the hook facing down uh, towards the bottom of the trigger assembly, I'll just put that hook around the back here, swing it around. I'm going to take our uh, OC Custom Triggers trigger bar, which is going to be easy to differentiate because A, it's polished, and B, it's could potentially have a different color trigger safety. And I'm just gonna find where that hook is and hook it onto the bottom of that hole right there. Now just reverse the process, kind of push it out and then kind of tuck it up underneath until it fits in there nicely. Should be simple enough. Then I'm going to just drop in the uh, trigger housing back here, making sure that the, uh, the trigger goes into it's home as well and push it straight down. At this point, I just need to push all the pins back in. Let me see, yeah, got this one. Just pop this one in the back. I'm going to go ahead and push in the locking block. 
and get this pin in on the top because I believe that your um, the little spring here is supposed to be under tension on that top pin so just gonna tuck the slide lock back into its place making sure you got daylight all the way through and then I'm gonna push in from right to left so I don't have to worry about going over the detent and then if it gets stuck again all you got to do is kind of play around with that slide lock until it goes right where it needs to be so at that point that's all we have to do on our frame um, if you want to know how to deal with um, replacing any of the springs in the slide I'll let you skip to the part where I do that on the Glock 43 uh, same process the plunger is the only thing that looks different but replacing the spring is the same process reassembly is the same process so I'm not gonna waste time going over that again as you can see this thing is dirty um, have, I don't think I cleaned it after that class but uh, it still runs just fine because it is indeed a Glock so again make sure that our guide rod is uh, lined up slide it back on and let's see what difference we have now so let me make sure I reset this uh, trigger scale which you get just for sake of mentioning is a Wheeler um, trigger scale so get that on the safety back there and that was three and a half pounds let's try that again see if we get something similar so reset that yeah so three and a half pounds again pretty consistent from uh, what this thing pulls uh, from my awareness of it now just replacing the trigger itself won't do that you kind of have to replace um, all the springs as well Personally, I think that's about as light as I would want to go on a carry gun. I would not want to go any lighter than that. But hopefully I'll be doing a little philosophy video where I talk about uh, triggers on carry guns. So uh, for more on that, uh, you can watch that video, which if, if I make it here soon, I'll, I'll link to this video as well. Uh, so you can see my opinion on that. Now, so at this point, we've replaced pretty much everything you can replace uh, between the 19s and the, the 43 so the only thing that's different that I haven't really gone over is the over travel eliminator and how to adjust the pre travel eliminator. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, if uh, if you're just jumping up to this point, then uh, we just finished replacing all the stuff for this trigger, but we want to go ahead and adjust the pre travel eliminator on this trigger. So when you actually depress the trigger, making sure that there's nothing in the chamber, um, you're you're going to see that little hole right there. So now that I have the little Allen key here that they provide you with, along with a manual showing how this works, all you have to do is get that little Allen key into that slot, and depending on which way you rotate, it's either going to increase or decrease the amount of pre-travel you have. Now obviously there is going to be a point uh, where you've taken too much out, and the way to tell that is because uh, obviously you want to make sure that all the safeties on the gun work the way they're supposed to. Now if you see right here, let me actually use this little Allen key as a pointer, um, the back here is the trigger safety so you can see that moving back there you want to make sure that there is still a gap between the trigger safety and the back of the trigger guard back here if there is no gap what can happen is your trigger safety may not actually um, be able to uh, swing out the way it's supposed to which is going to make the trigger easy to pull or actually able to be pulled uh, without a finger actually being on the trigger so make sure that you have that gap right there really really important that you have that gap so you can bring it back as close as you want to there but again you don't want to go any further than that now the way I have it adjusted I have very little pre-travel before I, I pretty much hit that wall as soon as I start applying pressure and then obviously there's gonna be a little creep because it is it is a Glock and um, but again very little overall travel once I put my finger on that trigger which is a huge huge improvement over how this thing comes from the factory in my opinion now uh, now that we've talked about the pre-travel eliminator, let's talk about the over-travel eliminator. Now, or, in order to do that, I'm going to grab my Glock 21, because this is my only Glock uh, with an over-travel eliminator. And so while I get this thing uh, taken down, let me explain why this is the only one that I have the over-travel eliminator. So like I said, this one I kind of went all out because it was my first time getting an aftermarket trigger. And I decided, you know what, let's just do all the bells and whistles and... Uh, I, I went ahead and sprung for the over travel eliminator as well. However, my experience with the over travel elim eliminator is while it does indeed eliminate some of the over travel, it's not so much that I feel like it's worth the added cost. Um, if 
if you are a huge uh, trigger aficionado and you feel like you're going to notice whether that trigger has over travel or not, then it's really not that much to spring for. Um, but again, that's going to be up to you. If you decide not to get one and then decide to get it later, it's really easy to swap it back in uh, and get everything back the way it's supposed to be. So again, this is going to look very similar to the Glock 19 trigger that we just did. The only difference is it's going to come with a uh, replacement trigger housing that has a little set screw back here and a little hole for you to get into it right back up in there. By adjusting it forward or back, you're going to get it to the point where if you see, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, um, but that set screw is pushing in further and further or more and more back. So as your trigger is getting pushed back, what that's going to do, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to demonstrate this with the oil on my fingers, but as your trigger comes back, that little set screw is going to physically stop it before it goes all the way back. So again, it's going to eliminate the distance traveled after that trigger actually breaks. Now the thing to be careful with here though is um, if you take, uh, if you eliminate too much of the over travel, your trigger won't actually actuate. Um, so you want to make sure that it, while you take some out, you don't want to push it too far in. Otherwise, again, you won't be able to disassemble your Glock. Now, if you do find yourself in the unfortunate situation where you twist this set screw too far in and you can't depress that trigger, I'm going to show you what happens. So I'm going to set this set screw really deep and hopefully we'll be able to set up exactly what I'm talking about. Um, the first time I did this, uh, I experienced this. It was extremely frustrating. I couldn't figure out how to disassemble my gun, um, but thankfully I was able to find a resource that explained it fairly well. So I'm going to do you guys a favor and explain it right here in case you run into that problem as well. Again, same uh, Vickers slide lock here. Slide in our uh, last pin. So hopefully I set that set screw deep enough to actually get this demonstration to work. Okay, so I'm going to push on the trigger and no matter how hard I push, you're going to not hear it click. So it's not clicking. So what that means is, oh, I, if I can't depress the trigger, then I can't take the slide off and I can't get this fixed. So what do I do? Now you could buy an armorer's plate, which would allow you to get into the back there. Uh, it's basically a half plate. It's going to be bright orange to make sure you don't accidentally, accidentally leave it on. And it's going to let you uh, actuate the trigger that way. If you don't have one, uh, because you were too cheap to purchase one, like uh, myself and other people I know, there is a way to disassemble the slide with it actually attached to the gun. Now again, this is not ideal. Hopefully you have the armorer's plate, but again, if you find yourself in this position like I have found myself, you're basically going to disassemble the slide the same way you disassemble it with the slide off. So I locked the slide to the rear, as you can see. And again, you see that little black sleeve at the top of that little U shape. I'm going to push in and I'm going to depress that little black sleeve just like I would um, if the slide was off the gun. And I'm trying to figure out a way to do this while the camera can see. Um, let's see. So I'm going to push in on that and push down on this end plate. I'm really not sure I'm going to be able to do this on camera. At least not the way I have the camera set up. I'm going to try my best though. So I'm pushing on that and then push it down. Okay, on the end plate. Again, covering it up so nothing comes springing out. Now I'm going to take the striker assembly out. So now with that out of the way, all, there's nothing going to be preventing the slide from going forward. So all I have to do is push down on the takedown levers and then the slide is going to come straight off. At this point, you can reassemble your slide. Push down on this little sleeve here. All right. Now we can obviously take our trigger back apart and really in order to adjust this you only have to take that back pin out you don't have to take it all all the way apart which is very convenient I'm gonna undo that set screw right about to the place I had it before pop that back in get our pin back in reassemble and hope and pray that our trigger will actually break now again 
you can see that there's going to be very little over travel once it actually breaks. So it definitely does do a little bit, um, but again, it's up to you on whether or not that's worth it. Again, for me, I just bought the one. I didn't buy them for any of my other locks. So, you know, keep, keep that in mind and decide for yourself what you want to do. So now that we've uh, installed them back on our Glocks here, um, I do want to say one more thing uh, before I finish. And that is if you're going to alter the triggers on, on your carry guns, I highly, 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 highly recommend function testing it before you actually put it back into service as a carry gun. If you have the opportunity to do this at a range, please do it at a range. So you can actually test it immediately before putting it back in your holster. The reason I say this is especially if you're going to start swapping around the springs, you know, your striker springs, if you uh, order like a, the Wolf aftermarket spring kits, um, you're going to have a bunch of different weights here. If you make the trigger as light as you can possibly get it, which is going to be pretty light, it'll get to the point where you get light primer strikes. And that's what I ran into when I first uh, started putting the trigger stuff in my Glock 21 here. I was getting light primer strikes. And that was not due to the fault of the trigger, but it was because I had weakened the spring so much that it didn't have enough force to actually um, impact the primer to set it off. So um, I ended up you know, playing around with the weights a little bit, and ever since then I've had zero issues. And the, the trigger itself is still fairly light. So again, if you're going to start messing around with the springs especially, but if, once you really start altering anything on your carry guns, I highly recommend function testing it before you start carrying it every day and trusting your life to it. So that's my little disclaimer there. Even if you have a competent gunsmith do this work for you, please check and t double check yourself before you put it back into service. So that's my little spiel right there. Um, hopefully I covered anything that you guys could possibly uh, need to know about installing these triggers. This, this video has definitely been long enough. Um, if you have any more questions, please feel free to let me know. Throw those in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. If there's anything I left out, you know, please let me know and I'll make another video uh, to supplement this one. Um, but in the meantime, as always, I hope you're able to get something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching.